good day fellow DIYers and woodworkers all around the world. My name is Tomas and you're watching Casual DIY channel. In today's video we will re-review after two about two years of use this spindle and belt sander. Check out the video. So about two years ago I have purchased this fantastic machine and uh, my initial video which I'm going to link up above and down below you can check it out what I actually thought about it two years ago and then you can compare it to what I think about it now. But in short in my first initial video when I actually bought this machine I thought it was absolutely brilliant. Um, how it's laid out and all the options, all the features seemed to me at that point really, really good. Now, after two years, let's talk about it again. So I'm pretty certain you've seen a similar machine from Rigid. It's a, is it a US based company? So I'm not sure who ripped off who this design. Uh, but here in the UK, I was able to pick up this Triton uh, version of it. The rigid, unfortunately, is not available or you have to pay an arm and a leg to actually get it from the US. So it makes sense to actually buy this. So this machine actually offers you two ways of sanding. A, as you can see, the belt sander is on top. And if you want, it's quite easily changeable to a spindle version as well and I'm going to demonstrate you that in just a second with my re-review videos after using the machine for a period of time in this case about two years I want to cover more or less all the bases from a casual DIY user like myself the first thing that you may be considering is the noise of the machine so we're going to switch it on. I'm going to use my uh, cheap sound lever meter to actually um, see how loud this machine is. First of all, we're going to measure the volume when this meter is about one meter away from the machine and then when it's actually next to it to see what difference it is and give you a better picture and understanding uh, how the noise spreads from this machine. So as you've seen the reading was in decibels and it's not too bad. Obviously with this machine you I would definitely recommend some dust extraction which will add to the general noise generated. But I think this machine is not too bad. Obviously if you're going to be using it for several hours at a time then it may start to become annoying especially to your neighbours living around. So uh, I wouldn't recommend using this machine after 10 o'clock at night or before 6 in the morning as you may have a visit from the local city council. As you can see at the minute, the sander is set up as a belt sander. Now, it's very easy to change the belt, leave it up, and the belt is coming off. Now, as we are at the point of the belts, and actually um, for the spindles as well, originally uh, you can obviously buy them from Triton, and they are fairly expensive. Obviously you can try to look uh, through the market for something to replace them with a different brand. As we're putting the belt back on, uh, you may experience a slight issue. So, uh, you know, you uh, insert your belt, put the pressure on, and off you go sanding. Nothing hard to do. You offer your piece of wood on the table to the sanding belt, and in my case, there's no issues. The belt sander is 90 degrees uh, to the table. I've got no issues with it. But on some occasions, I've noticed that the sanding actually wasn't giving me a 90 degrees angle. Now, why is that? I'm going to show you that in a bit more detail in a second. But basically, at the bottom of this uh, belt attachment, um, there's a bit of a ledge that's under an angle. And if you drop your sandpaper too low it will be under angle but it will still rise high enough 
to sand your piece of wood uh, under the angle of that ledge. So let's take this out and I'm going to show you what I mean exactly. Now you've got two star knobs. This one regulates how high or low the sandpaper will go. So you've got the regulation there. It's quite easy to use and it works absolutely fine. Now with this star knob, you basically unlock the belt sander attachment so you can replace it with the spindle. And here is the first major problem. It actually is getting stuck all the time and it's ever so hard to undo the star knob. And I mean, it's really hard. <sighs> to the point, I have to use some force. So in this case, actually it wasn't too bad, but I had an instance where I had to use the key and a hammer to actually undo this. So um, probably periodically it needs to be cleaned or, you know, a bit of WD-40, but that's one thing that you need to watch out for. Okay, so that's the uh, bell sander attachment. I'm going to show you the ledge. I'm hoping you're going to be able to see it. Maybe from this side. There you go. It's this ledge here. So that's one of the things you need to watch out for when you're going to be using this machine. Make sure the sandpaper doesn't actually go below the line where the ledge is because you're not going to get a good result. So let's put the spindle attachment um, and everything is on this machine. So you don't really have to look for additional storage anywhere. Everything's located in the uh, vicinity of the machine itself, which is really, really good in my opinion. And there you go. Really simple, really easy. And as I mentioned before, everything is on this machine. So all the bits and pieces, the washers, uh, the clearings plate, everything has got its place on the machine. Now, this machine costs about 200 British pounds. Depends if you can get it on offer. I've picked mine on Amazon for about, I think I managed to actually get it on offer for 169 British pounds. So it's a, it's a decent price for the tool. Uh, usually you can get just the spindle version, oscillating spindle sander for about 100 quid. And having the belt sander attachment with it as well, 450 watts. I think it's a decent buy if you can get it for about 200 British pounds. Because the price is not too high, unfortunately the table is not cast iron and you cannot use any attachments like the uh, Mac switches, any, um, any magnets will actually not work with it, which is a bit of a shame because if it had the uh, cast iron table it would be absolutely fantastic. But I understand they had to make the cuts somewhere. When it comes to sanding, obviously the big thing is the dust extraction. Um, you don't want to have the particles of dust flying all over your workshop as it's not very good for you and obviously your surrounding environment and then you get all your tools and all your garage or workshop covered in dust so definitely want to avoid that. Now with this sander I'll have to say the dust extraction is fair, it's not perfect but it's okay. Um, in the, my future videos, I will try to make an enclosure uh, for the sander, for the spindle and for the belt sander that will help to um, suck more of that dust away from the machine so it doesn't spray all over my workshop. But that's in the future videos. But uh, definitely if you are looking for a workshop with zero or close to zero dust, this may not be the perfect sander for you. And now let's head into the two most important questions about this machine. Did I have any major issues with it? No, I didn't. Uh, it works absolutely fine. It never missed a beat. 
uh, it's just a workhorse and um, sometimes I'm using it for several hours at a time when I've got a lot of multiple items to sand and it doesn't get hot it just works uh, no issues with it whatsoever would I buy it again yes I would for the price um, if you can get it as I mentioned before for about 200 British pounds it's actually a very good tool and it gives you a lot of uh, versatility a lot of options as well uh, the one thing you have to be considering is the price of the sandpaper and obviously uh, the sleeves uh, for the rolls as well they're not the cheapest ones you can try to find um, some replacements I haven't found any that would be cheaper and on par with the quality or better so um, at the minute as mentioned before I'm just using the original ones but if you're actually using this machine and you do have a cheaper versions of these belt sanders or even the um, sleeves for the spindles please let me know down below and in the comments because you know saving money is what this channel is about getting value from cheaper tools that will still give you really good results and uh, yeah if you've got that knowledge of cheaper versions of those drop a comment down below so everybody in this community uh, will benefit from that but other than that i don't really have any more to say about this so check out my initial review um, about this sander as most of the things i still stand by and i think it's a brilliant tool for the money um, if you're considering buying something like this or similar, uh, Triton is a well-known make and um, you know hopefully delivers a good quality. It certainly did for me. So if you're in the market, I think it's a good buy. If you found this video interesting or it brought you some value or information, drop me that like button down below and consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't done so yet as I am bringing content on a weekly basis uh, that may be interest to you in the future if you decide to subscribe don't forget to press that bell notification button as well so you will be notified of all my future content just change the settings to all if you're interested in any other my re-review videos of the tools i've got in my workshop there's a really cool playlist just over here you can click it and all the videos are in neat order for you to check out maybe you'll find your future tool there but uh, that's it for me thank you so much for watching take care